I came to Baltimore in 1968, and just, uh, that's the year that uh, the center was founded. My mom was one of the founders, Elizabeth Locklear, along with Herbert Locklear and Rosie Hunt. Um, my mom saw the need to, uh, in talking to some people that um, we needed to keep our culture alive, and in order to do that, we needed to start our own center. Our people came up from North Carolina and, and decided to make this a home uh, where many numbers of us were gathering, and this is how the center was born. I mean, we needed a location uh, uh, that would service our specific needs and our concerns. And for our people coming from Carolina, mostly in the 50s and the early 70s, it's really important to keep our herds going. If we don't, everybody just slides one way. Coming to Baltimore, um, everybody was pretty much on Baltimore Street or either on South Ann Street or on Broadway, and people lived together. My mom had a house here on Ann Street, and as family members and different friends came up, uh, they would rent them rooms. So it's like uh, one hand helping another hand, and then, um, they would get on their feet and get their own place and then some of their family would come and they would do the same thing. When I walk out of here, I live kind of a distance from all the other natives around here. So the really the only time I really get to see them is every Tuesday when I show up here or when we have a, a, a community meeting or we have a mini powwow, our main powwow. It's the only time that we all come together and we have one place to be. So to me, this is not only a, a meeting place, it's the glue, in my opinion, of our community. This is where we all come and we stick together. The strong sense of community that Native people have here in this urban environment, to be able to see other people that look like them and have similar cultures and traditions, and we can learn from each other. And I think that's really valuable. We didn't really fit in uh, when we first got here. They either thought you were white or they thought you were black. So we had to prove ourselves that, no, we're Native American. That's who we are and this, this is uh, who we're going to be. And the center helped establish that, uh, having our own, our own identity. We think about the Baltimore American Indian Center only being just for Baltimore, but when, we, when you look back how we've assisted, you know, any and all Native people who have come through those doors and, and seeking some type of assistance. If it hadn't been for the Indian Center, I wouldn't have had the funding or the grant to go through to finish my schooling. So they are actually the reason why I've been in the dental field for the past 20 years, because they are the ones who had the program here that actually paid for my schooling. So every time I said it, I pull a little bit, cut a little bit more, and then made a more. Depending on what night you come to culture class, you'll see a multiple, multitude of different things. Um, you will see children learning how to dance, um, boys learning how to drum and sing. Um, maybe you'll see some adults and parents learning different types of crafts, um, making uh, dream catchers or making um, medicine wheels or anything like that. The, the greatness of the, of the class itself is just being enriched, uh, being, becoming culturally aware of not only your specific tribe, but being aware of Native culture as a whole. I would rather have a child to identify with who they are and being brought up in a healthy way and being a well-rounded person to live in our world and the non-native world. Um, it's a hard thing to do. My mother started by working here. Um, I grew up here. Um, my daughter started dancing, I'm going to say, when she was around seven. And I have um, two grandkids. So my grandson is four, and he's starting to come, and he wants to, he wants to drum, and he wants to sing. It's a good feeling for us to have our grandchildren there to be able to pass this tradition down to them and to have the center here for us to be able to share our culture with them and provide a safe and a good place for them to come. But when you think about a powwow, you know, it's where we can have not only Native people there, but we can have non-Natives and they can sit and relax and enjoy and they can feel that drum just like we do uh, to a certain level. You'll be seeing our people uh, hugging and shaking each other's hands and telling each other how good it is to see each other, and that's definitely the case. And that goes along with the idea of what our gatherings are about, is uh, really to see old friends, definitely make some new ones, and we're hoping that you won't stay, remain just seated, but you'll get a chance during our breaks and uh, other opportunities to get around our dancers, you know, inquire, shake their hands, and 
and greet them as they will greet you. And it really is a time to bring people closer together. When we think about uh, the powwow, we, you know, we have to always think about the Baltimore American Indian Center, as we should. Uh, we should think about the history and, and how, how many years that they've been doing this and doing it with the support of so many. Dancing to me is the simplest way of giving thanks and to give an honor and praise for those who dance before you and those that can't dance anymore. There's always a, a, an appreciation, there's always a respect, uh, and that's, again, what you see at a powwow. You know, you always hear that word respect, you hear that word courtesy and honor, and these are the things that hopefully people will continuously learn that that's, you know, that's what makes us who we are. That's why we do what we do. You know, that's why we dress the way we do, we, we, we speak the way that we speak, how we interact with each other um, from a traditional standpoint. We are a group of people that is thinning out, and um, if we don't continue to teach, um, our younger people and give them that sense of pride of who they are and what they are, um, we will eventually be gone. A lot of times you know, when we think about Native Americans, my people, we, we, we tend to always want to look at the past of Indian people. Uh, but what we need to be doing equally is looking at what we're doing today and what we're planning for the future. This is our identity. This is, you know, when you come here, when you go outside and you see that uh, mural on the wall, that came from a, a group of uh, summer workers that painted that. And that identifies that this is a Native American building. When you look, um, when you look at the door up, up above the door, there's feathers there that represents Native people. So to have something that belongs to you, it's just like owning your own home. When you own your home, own home it's your home. The Indian Center is our home, so for the Native people, that's the way we look at it.